Johannesburg, right next to the hospital, in which we want to build a cancer center for people with cervical cancer, Burkitt's lymphoma, HIV, TB. These kinds of cancers of no concern to the Western world, but they are really of concern to Africa. So this is going to be happening. Uh, we've closed on this building, um, and this will be happening in Johannesburg. Which then brings us to the core of the issue of today of the second generation vaccines. But this second generation vaccines is merely a platform, not just for COVID, but for HIV, hookworm, schistosomiasis, yellow fever, dengue fever. But let me talk about my concerns of where we are today and why we are where we are today. If you look at this virus in simplistic terms, it has a protein on the outside called spike and the protein on the inside called nucleocapsid. The entire world has focused on creating antibodies to spike with the idea that it will stop the infection with antibodies. And the answer is it does that, but it doesn't prevent the virus from replicating. And the nucleocapsid is necessary for the virus to grow. So to stop the problem completely in its tracks, you can't just stop the infection. You've got to kill the cell that's allowing it to grow so you don't have transmission. There's a fundamental philosophical difference that I've had with the entire industry since March of 20. We were part of the warp speed and then we were de-warped <laughs> so that large industries could go and make these spike vaccines. I was pretty vocal about that and said we will create typhoid Marys. What do I mean by that? The virus would mutate against the antibody, you would have a vaccine, you'd be asymptomatic and begin to spread. And Omicron sadly is that, Delta was that, Beta was that, Alpha was that. What scares me is, is there now a Delta-Omicron combination? Well, there was no point in just screaming about it, there's a point in actually doing something. So next slide. So we went about creating the spike and nucleocapsid vaccine on the left-hand side. I'm not going to go through a science lesson here, but in the middle core is the spike and nucleocapsid vaccine on the left and the spike-based vaccine. And you see this happens to be a Pfizer vaccine. And these are two sets of patients and the dots uh, indicative of T cell activation. Next slide. And if you can see the comparison, if you have a spike and a nucleocapsid based vaccine, you see in triplicate the S specific T cells and N specific T cells, these measles like dots, so that your body has now been educated. If it sees a virus, it will kill the virus based on its S and T and N, what we call epitopes. On the right hand side is a subject that got the Pfizer vaccine. And I think you can clearly see the absence of T cells. Which then says, next slide, is this is what we need. You and I, millions of these T cells. They're floating around. This is a video truly of T cells floating around and looking for an infected cell, this blue cell, and killing it. That infected cell is the factory for COVID. That is the only way to get rid of this pandemic. So what was exciting, just a few weeks ago, Imperial College of London had the clearest evidence, they say, that is T cells that is necessary to prevent infection. How did they find this? 
they said if you had a common cold, the nuclear capsid inside for that is equal to that of SARS, and these patients did not get infected. So it is very clear the world is now catching on to this concept of T cells. Next slide. Which then says we can do this quite literally in this building. We have now developed this SNN T cell vaccine as a second generation vaccine and we want to manufacture this in Africa for Africa and export it to the world. Next slide. This is a picture of our manufacturing plants. I think this will surprise many and maybe put fear in the hearts of some of the competitors that we are now self-reliant. On the left-hand side in the United States, as you see, we have eight plants, close to, again, 25,000 square meters. And then you see plant number nine and plant number 10 in South Africa, which is this plant. And then a the plant will be about to open maybe in Botswana, and maybe we'll open one in Australia. The point is, if we make South Africa the nucleus of the world, the Singapore of Africa, the opportunity for us then to actually truly make a difference and impact the world. So, Mr. President, I will have a video which I'd like to share with you and want to thank you for giving us this opportunity to do this.
Danke, Herr Spiel. Thank you very much, Dr. Sun Xiong, for being such a special human being, for being such a special South African. So American life did not trap you in the amnesia about where you come from. You stayed in memory of your origin. And we also want to appreciate the fact that you are distributing plants all over the world to give hope to human possibilities. Another big applause, please. The, the following speakers, except the president, who I'm going to call, are directed to speak from where they are. Whether they choose to sit or stand, it is their discretion. Now I'm going to call upon the chief executive officer at Infectious Disease Research.